Greetings, greetings to everyone. You are Slavyanka donors. My name is Susan Lambert and I'm one of the singers in Slavyanka. I'm here today with two of our prominent members of Slavyanka, Bettina Gray and Lauren Carley. Slavyanka and its artistic director, Irina Shoknova, are extremely grateful to each and every one of you for your generous donations. We are especially thankful for your support during these past difficult years during the COVID pandemic. We are thriving. We are indeed thriving, but we wouldn't be so if it weren't for you, our donors. So to show our deep appreciation, we want to gift you with a few conversations that will inform you of some of the unique and intriguing activities that Slavyanka has participated in and continues to engage in. The first such discourse is presented to you by Bettina Gray. Bettina is Slavyanka's composer in residence and she sings in our alto section. She will tell you about her experience as a juror and a planner in the Kastalski competition. Being a juror in this international competition is an amazingly honorable thing that she's been asked to do. Bettina was most qualified for this honor as she has performance experience in piano, voice, and clarinet. She has performed in classical jazz and folk ensembles. She also has been accepted into the ACDA Choral Composer Forum at Lehigh University in Pennsylvania. She has studied with the master composer, David Scheinfeld. In addition to her music experience and her um, massive performance experience, she has produced and interviewed as a host for public broadcasting, having hosted several radio and television series. Bettina? Thank you. I would like you to go ahead and tell us about the Katowski composition. Thank you. Thank you very much. I. Um... The opportunity to be a judge for this Moscow Conservatory sponsored choral composers, young choral composers competition came through our connections with Irina, who um, continues to have her connections in Russia with the conservatory students and professors she worked with over the years. In fact, it was that connection which alerted us to the opportunity to be the only American chorus that sang at Moscow Conservatory's 150th anniversary in 2016, which was an amazing tour, and I hope we have a chance to tell our donors a little bit about that as well. I was contacted by Irina, would I like to be a judge? in the third Kostalski competition, which was in 2018. And I was pleased to be involved. The entries came from all over the world. Their request to me from the planning committee was would I help uh, publicize the competition entry to expand the audience and young composers from just Russia and their contacts to an international audience. And I happen to have, through several memberships in composing organizations, the platform to do that. So fast forward to 2021, I was contacted again and asked this year, that year, to serve not only as a judge, but also on their planning committee. And that it was a personal honor to me, but it was actually also an honor to Slavyanka for their recognition of the talent and expertise that we continue to have here in, in music performance, in choral music. Um, it, it's the honor Irina brought to us, I feel. This is the flyer that they sent out starting with a photo of Kostalski, who was a leading choral uh, composer and taught at the university at, the, at Moscow Conservatory. 
uh, until, I believe, until his death in 1920s. So the competition they structured it was for young composers in both sacred and secular categories and in folk music arrangement. So this is the Russian flyer, and I wanted to scroll through and show you a, a thing that pleases me in particular. These are the committee from Moscow, and they're not just Moscow Conservatory. They were, I think there were four major Russian conservatories involved in this um, collaboratively and sponsored through Moscow Con Conservatory. But you'll see the images, and there is <laughs> Bettina, the only female and the only non-Russian on the planning committee. So I got a kick out of that. Uh, I'd like to ask you, may I, Bettina, a yeah. question? Um, were these entrants only Russian or were they from around the world? Well, good question, because the next thing I have to show you is the application form and categories. And the entries this year, there were 160 respondents entries. The categories were original composition for a cappella, folk song arrangement for choir, arrangement for mixed choir of any musical style, arrangement for a smaller vocal ensemble, and sacred choral music. Those were the categories that we received submissions. And these were the countries this year. I noticed in the materials from 2018, there were also entries from uh, Israel and some other countries as well. The predominant entries were Eastern European. And did you have to, how many did you receive that you had to look through? 160 entries and we were given a week's deadline to cover them. Unbelievable, the amount of time that must have taken. It was <laughs> a marathon. Please and tell us just, just a tiny bit, what criterion did you use to judge 160 compositions in a week? Well, having been on the other side of this, I hated to be ruthless, but being even to get through these, I had to be. So if a score did not present well, if it was missing dynamic markings, if it did not, I didn't, I listened to the first minute to see if there was any merit and skipped to the next. So I had to put demanding uh, criteria. The other part of the challenge for this is we were dealing with multiple languages and there were often not translations. So mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time with Uncle Google Google Translate in order to, just to get the most rudimentary picture of uh -huh. of the score. And what about the winner? Um, was there a gala concert at the at the the Great Hall in the Moscow Conservatory? Uh, they were in, going through a pandemic as well, yeah. Yes, and the they had a peak surge right when they'd planned to do the winner competition. They were going to as a prize award, do the top winners in a joint choral concert from several choral, from each of the different conservatories involved, they were gonna to put it together a joint chorus and perform the winning works at the main hall, which would have been grand in the back of my mind, what fun it would be to go. And then it was impossible. Mm and I have not heard back. I do hope that concert happened. I do hope we're able to follow up. And wouldn't it be wonderful if Slavyanka could do one of the winners? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Yeah. So that is pretty much the story on the Kostolsky competition. I'd like to share with you on my share screen the, first, the thank you letter that was sent, and also some of the prior award winners. What we're looking at here is there were diplomas sent out to each of the people who won 
the third international competition, this one that I worked on, I worked on the third, I also worked on the fourth. Uh, Irina and I were both judges, but her schedule was so swamped that she did the final pass through looking at them. But these are some of the people who won in the third. Belfast, Northern Ireland, uh, Jerusalem, uh, this one was a USA composer, Romania. So you see, this wasn't all just Russian composers. It was a very broad um, scope to mm -hmm. it. And for this last competition, we received a really nice thank you letter for the work that we'd done.